Good morning, guys. In this video, we will start chapter 7, which is about the internal forces inside a bee. So, guys, in this chapter, we will learn how to find these internal forces. So, why should I find the internal forces? Because, in fact, guys, this will be very useful for you in later courses, like the course of mechanics of materials or the course of strengths. In fact, guys, the design of any structural or mechanical member requires the material to be used to be able to resist the loading acting on the member. So how can I know that this material can resist the loading acting on the member? It is basically by finding the internal forces. From these internal forces, I can find the stresses in the course of mechanical, mechanics of materials and in the course of strengths, I will learn some theories that will allow me to compare these stresses with the strengths of the material and so, so that I can be able to see if this material can handle this loading or not. Now the question is how to find these internal forces. Because if I don't know these internal forces, I cannot predict if the material of this beam can resist the loading or not. How to find any internal force? Basically, guys, in order to find an internal force or in order to see this internal force, I should make a cut. If I do a cut, I would see the internal forces on both sides of this cut so that if I join these two sections or these two parts together, the internal forces will vanish because basically they are internal. So this is what I did here. I did a cut at B and then guys, I separate both parts from each other to see the internal forces. So what should I see? I should see three types of internal forces. And now, guys, I want you to memorize their direction convention and their definition. These three internal forces are basically the normal force called NB, the shear force called VB, and the bending moment called MB. Now, let's, guys, go over each of them in definition and in direction. I will start first by what is called the normal internal force component of symbol N. By definition and like its name, it is always the normal to the cut surface. So it is always the perpendicular force from the cut, perpendicular to the cut surface. And guys, here by convention, and you should memorize this convention, the normal force is always out from the surface. So it is always out from the surface from both sides of the cut. So as you can see, guys, NB here and NB here, they are both out from the surface. They are opposite, but they are both out from the surface. So on both sides. Now the second internal force component is called the shear force and its symbol is V. And now this shear force as its name is parallel to the cut surface like scissors guys. The shear force is always parallel to the cut surface and guys you should memorize this convention in direction. The shear force is downward for the left part and upward on the right part like uh, as shown in this example. So it is always guys downward on the left part by convention and upward on the right part. And you should here guys decide which part is, each, is easier to deal with in order to find the shear. Force, but you should memorize the sign convention. Now the last one is called bending moment and its symbol is M. Now what is the bending moment? Basically guys, if I have a beam and I have some loading on this beam, this beam will experience a bending moment like you see here. So this is the bending moment, all right? So the bending moment is the moment caused by the external loading on the beam. 
And now, guys, for the sign convention, and you should also memorize this, it is always clockwise for the left part and counterclockwise for the right. So this is how you put, you represent your internal forces. You should memorize the convention of direction because, in fact, these directions are the correct ones. So you cannot put V on the left part upward and then do your calculation. It is always downward on the left part and upward on the right part. Now, guys, before starting the procedure to find the internal forces, I want to remind you that I have two types of beams. The first type is called a simply supported beam. In the simple supported beam, I have a pin at one end and a ruler at the other end. All right, so I have a pin, and I know that the pin has two reactions, and I have a ruler that has only one reaction at the other end. I don't have any moment reaction at the supports. Now, the second type of beam is called the cantilevered beam. In the cantilevered beam, guys, I have a fixed support at one end and it is free at the other end. All right? So, guys, whenever we finish this chapter, we will be able to draw the shear force diagram like this one and the moment uh, diagram and the bending moment diagram like this one for any type of beam or for any external loading on a certain beam. Now, what is the procedure to find V, M and N? Usually, guys, N will be equal to zero in uh, the most cases. How to know if the normal is equal to zero if I don't have any oblique force on the beam or any horizontal force? So if all the loading are vertical with some moments, then the normal force, which is the internal normal force, will be equal to zero. So the objective is to find, is to draw the shear diagram and the moment diagram. And we will learn two methods to draw them. The first method is called the method of sections, and the second method is called the method of area. Now, in order to apply the first method, you should always, guys, start by finding the reactions on the beam. And then, guys, you should start by finding B and M. How to find them? I should make a cut. And here, guys, the trick to solve the method of section. You should make several cuts to find V and M all over the beam. How to know the number of cuts or how to do this cuts, we'll we will learn this later on. Now, you should make a cut, let's say the first cut, and then you should put V and M in their conventional direction. And then, guys, you should do the sum of forces in Y direction to find V and the sum of moments to find M. Now, what you should do, guys, basically, is to do the sum of moments at the point of the cut. So if you do the cut at X, you should do the sum of moments at this X in order to get rid from V and to find this M. And you should decide which part is easier to deal with. This depends on the loading and on the place or on the location of the supports. So guys, the first step ever is to find the reactions and we know how to find them by, do, by applying the equilibrium equation, sum of f x, sum of f y, and sum of moment all over the beam. So I will take the free body diagram first as my whole beam and find all my reactions. And we said, guys, that the second step is to do a cut and then apply the equilibrium equations on one part uh, of this cut. So basically, guys, how to decide uh, on the location of the cut? Usually, guys, each force or moment on the beam will change the internal forces. Which means, guys, if I have this very simple example, so this is a very simple example, I only have one external force and two separates. So, of course, guys, uh, here I have one reaction and one reaction. I don't have any horizontal reaction because basically I don't have any external load. So basically, this should be 2.5 and this should be uh, 2.5 by symmetry. I have an external load. So guys, the first step is done. I know the reactions. Now I should do my cut. How to do your cut? Guys, you should, if you have a force or a moment, you should locate this force and your moment and, or your moment. And then guys, you should make a cut 
before this force and after this force. So this is how you can do the cut. So if I have an external force at point B, this means that I should do a cut before B and after B. Why? Because this 5 kN will change the equation of the shear force and the bending moment. So I should always do a cut before the force or the moment and after the force or the moment. Now, if I have, for example, another loading here, so I should do a cut before 5, after 5, and after this, let's say, 10 kN. So as you can see, guys, if I have a force, I will always have a cut before this force and after this force. So before 5, I have a cut. After 5, I have a cut. And since before 10, I already have a cut, then I will only have one cut after 10 before the point C, which is the end of the beam, which means I will have three cuts. So whenever, guys, I have a force or a moment, I should do a cut before this force and after this force. Now, guys, if I have a distributed load, since, guys, the distributed load is continuous, then the equation of V and M with respect to X will not change all over this beam, all over this distributed load. It is because in terms of X, so V in terms of X will not change. So I can only do one cut here. So if I have a distributed load, you should have only one cut over this di distributed load. So I will have only here one cut, and this cut should be between the start point of the beam and the ending point of the beam. Now, if this beam, guys, doesn't end at the end of the distributed load, so I will do some extension here, then, guys, you should also do a cut after the distributed load, like the case of the force. So you should do a cut through the distributed load and after it. Now here, since I, uh, since my beam is ending at the end point of the distributed load, so I can only have one cut. Now, if I take this example right here, I have two different types of external loading. The first one is distributed load, and the second one is a point load. So what should I do? As I said, guys, I should do a cut through the distributed load. And since this distributed load is not ending at the end of the beam, so I should do another cut after this distributed load. And then, guys, I should do a cut after the point load because I have already do a cut before, before this point load. Now, what if I have this case? Of course, guys, I should do a cut through the distributed load. I should do a cut here. Why? Because, in fact, I have the end of this distributed load and I have a force at B. I will take another example where B is not at the end of the distributed load and then this is my case. Now guys, what if I have an extension of the beam so the beam is not ending at C? What I should do guys, I should do also a cut after C. What if guys, I have the same case but this roller at B is not here, it is here basically. I should do guys, I should do a cut through the distributed load and since the roller guys has also a reaction here so I should make sure guys that my second cut is between the end of the distributed load before the next point load which is here the force at the reaction. Now yes this reaction is also considered as an external load where I should do a cut before and after because guys it is at a point on the beam it is not at the end of the beam. Now what if guys this moment is not here I will do the extension of this beam and I will put my moment here at a point D. So what should I do here guys? I should do another cut after C because of course uh, I should do a cut after my point load which is here 20 kN and I should do a cut after the moment which is at point D. Now this cut will not change the shear force because in fact the shear force will be estimated by doing the sum of forces in y direction. However, it will change the bending moment because the bending moment will include all the moment over the beam. So I should do a cut after this bending moment.